When I was in my mid-30s, I just decided that I wanted to write a novel. It's what I wanted to do for myself. I had work, but I didn't have anything that really was sort of like my heart's desire. It took about 10 years to write the novel. I mean, really to do this, it just takes sheer determination. When I first started writing this, uh, it, it had to come out of something that I knew at least some. So my father's always been a fascinating figure to me. As a matter of fact, probably most things I know about him are fiction anyway because he doesn't really talk that much. He was a math genius when he was young and he went away to the University of Chicago when he was 16 and his problem when he got there was running in and finding that you had to be more than book smart. Book smart wasn't enough to get you through life. And it was really my exploration for what it's like to just not be the same as anybody around you and how you learn to handle and go through that. I mean, I sort of imagined that this is maybe not exactly what happened to my father, but maybe this is kind of what he went through as a kid growing up. In my novel, Life After Genius, uh, the main character, Mead, is inspired by my father. He's a young genius who is 18 and a week away from graduating from college when his whole world changes and he does what any young boy would do. He runs away and he goes home only to run into more problems when he gets home. The first version of the story, I really did write me very much as my father really is, but people who read it didn't find him very believable. But I found that the more I fictionalized him, the more believable he came. So that's how Mead was born in, in many stages. However, it did stay true to who my father is in the sense that my father does use a sense of humor and much of my sense of humor comes from him and I wanted to reflect that in the novel because I see it as a survival skill really for somebody who doesn't fit in with everybody else. They'd much rather have people laughing with them than laughing at them. When I was a kid I would try to tell stories around the dinner table but I never could even get through a sentence before my father or pop up out of his chair saying I'd either mispronounced the word or misused the word. He ran to this big, boulder-sized dictionary to look up the word, find out its meaning, its derivation. By the time all that was done, the story was completely forgotten, and I didn't even think I could write an entire sentence, let alone an entire novel. But I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> For a living, I design book covers. And so, of course, when I came to writing my own book and sending out query letters, I decided that it might help to have an image of the book cover on the letter. So I went ahead and I designed a cover for myself. It actually did get a very good response from agents. I would have people who were interested in reading the novel just because they thought the cover looked really fun and quirky. And then when it came to finally publishing the novel, it was kind of odd for me, being an art director, to have somebody else design the cover for me. So I sort of got to see the whole other side of the business for once. But it ended up being that it, it came out, you know, pretty much what I wanted to do. I'm a happy author. 